glass. It's a lot more than just windows that let you see outside. Whether it's for balconies, bathrooms, kitchens, pools or patios, our glass brings light, life and texture to any home. Metro Performance Glass, bringing you How Did You Do That? For many of us, being bonded to the land is the most important aspect of being a New Zealander, a nation with a strong sense of independence. We pride ourselves on home ownership, which has always combined well with our do-it-yourself attitude. The Kiwi home and living the Kiwi dream go hand in hand. There are many ways to define the Kiwi home, a family residence, a dwelling commanding its own section, the last chance for a home-cooked meal, the very cornerstone of New Zealand life, a place to live, love, and grow old. John and Kerry have been living the Kiwi dream for 24 years. Their Linfield residence, built in 1989 with its commanding views of Manukau Harbour, has afforded them a great lifestyle, a place to raise a family, a place to call their own. But times have changed and their home hasn't. While their location remains idyllic, their family has expanded. What was contemporary and modern way back in 1989 now looks old and tired. Everyone agrees it's time for a change, but this is a huge undertaking. And with a family of nine, including Lily the cat, it's not going to be easy. Normally I'd be ducking for cover, but luckily we've enlisted the help of a few experts. A brilliant interior designer, a gifted architectural designer, a talented builder, and a skilled landscape architect keen to take on the challenge of transforming a late 1980s home into something modern and contemporary. G'day, I'm Coxie. Well, there's no surf beach nearby and the project I've got ahead of me is pretty major, so probably going to have to abandon the fishing for a while as well. As well as a major renovation, I've got some small projects to do that you can probably have a crack at yourself. Hey Coxie, good to see you back. Hey, hey. Hi, I'm Amy. I'm no expert, but we're going to transform this tired family home into something a little bit more modern and contemporary. I found your tool belt. Cool. I tried to hide it. <laughs> so, where'd you find it? I found it under the house. You've really yeah, got no, This week, the steel goes in. Coxie tackles a space-saving project in the office, a new deck replaces the old rotten one, and fresh beginnings as seeds are sown. I love a sunny deck, but not these ones. To use an old Kiwi building term, they're yeah. stuffed. I'm quite impressed actually the creativity involved with this deck. It's a negative fall towards the house, where the gutter, I think, is sitting underneath, so it goes between the cladding, so it's pushing as much water as you can at the house. At the house, yeah. But there's it's, no gutter; it just drips down the back. That's that's yeah. I'm not sure what to say about that. So actually, all I come up here for was where's the new line going to come off the chimney? Yep, we're going to take this line, bring it out, out to the corner over there. Yep. And then just create this whole space. Right. So it's going to be bigger and better, and nice piece of glass around the front here. So, so then, another meter out, and get rid of all that. That's just rotted completely out from under it. We don't know what the timber's like under here, so all the structure, I say, is gone and start again from scratch. Uh, it has to go. Yeah, I'm glad we've moved on from how we used to build because oh, me too. back here, it was just, it was guaranteed to fail. Wow, this is a lot of steel. What are you going to use all this for? Well, yeah, there's a lot of steel here, a lot of money spent here, but I'll show you where it goes. Follow me. So what do you think? There was a kitchen here once. I've never seen the kitchen disappear so fast. I know, and what's going to replace all these walls that was here before is going to be all that stuff outside. Wow, so all of that steel is going to go into here. It's important because where there are walls, we can replace them with steel. So this wall comes completely out, piece the steel goes right across there, steel down there, steel across there. And we're holding up a whole second story up there and a whole lot of roof out the edge. Okay. There's only one way to do it. And it's all covered up. One big flat ceiling through here, the whole thing, all the steel's covered, all gone. All covered up, completely disappeared. Completely. And I'll show you what else is done. See, so you've made a start on the decorating, Amy. Nice work. Oh, I haven't even started yet. What a beautiful deck. Isn't it? Yeah, this is just like a lovely sunspot, this one. Mm, pity it's going, though, eh? But this is the sunniest spot of the house. 
Well, like all the other decks in the place, this one is rotten. It's terrible. We can't even replace it. I mean, to replace this would cost a fortune. So, one of your tiles, same as the roof going back over here, internal drain, bit hard to explain. Window, not a door anymore, getting lifted up. Notice anything different? I think you've done something with your hair. <laughs> of course. No, this is gone. This whole deck's disappeared. All gone. Yeah, well, it had to go, because it was, as you know, rotten. It was like this, wasn't it? Sloping back towards the house, had the handrail was this high, it was a trip hazard, the whole thing was gone now. We are building another deck though. It was better to pull the old one down and start from scratch. So just that part's going to be the deck, which will catch that beautiful view. That is an amazing view. Hmm, black steel. Sounds like a job for our own man of steel. Now the idea with mobile steel fabrication is that all the steel's brought to site, Roughly the length, it's cut, it's welded, it's drilled, and then put in place. That way there's no mistakes with measuring and getting things exactly precisely right. We'll get a metre from inside and our beams will come here probably a metre or half a metre longer than we need. Straight off the steel truck, so we're going to cut it all and do the whole lot, you know. So paint it, painting the first stage, and the builders will tell us where they want holes, what size they want holes, you know, how far in from the edge and all that kind of stuff like that. You kind of nut out what you need to do with the builder. Coxie needs to stop mucking around with that steel and get back to work on the deck. Well, just a few more nogs and then ready to put the ply down on this deck. It's got a lot of fall in this time, at least two degrees, that's the minimum. And it's got a gutter at the front which will catch all the water and get it away from the house. Nothing leaning back. And underneath we're going to have a really nice covered area. A great improvement. This former nursery is going to need to be an office and a guest bedroom. So Coxie's latest project is the essential key to making it all work. Today's project is a hidden bed. Here I've got mm, probably 60 pages of instructions and details. Imported from the States is a mechanism that's going to make this thing work. What it is is a desk at one stage which rolls over into a bed and the stuff that's on the desk actually stays dead level, dead straight and stable so that when you roll into a bed it just rolls underneath and is hidden away. Hence being called a hidden bed. Lots of plywood, lots of cutting, lots of screwing and lots of head scratching. Judging by the size of that book, I'm going to leave him to it for a while. Last week, Coxie and I finished the worm farm, but this week, we're actually going to bring it to life by putting the worms into it. We need to stuff the edges of each tyre with damp newspaper. Once that's done, create a cosy nest for the worms using a bit of old sack or carpet. Add some manure, straw and compost. Make sure the manure is not too fresh and comes from some vegetarian animals. Feed your worms weekly with food scraps from the kitchen including the likes of coffee grinds, tea bags and eggshells. Breaking their food into smaller pieces can speed up the rate of digestion. Worms love bacteria, so it also helps to leave the scraps in a container for a few days. Next, add the worms. You need tiger worms for this job, not your regular garden variety. You can get them from most garden centres or search online. After each feeding, cover the farm with damp newspaper or materials. The worms like it dark and damp. Some things aren't good to feed worms though. Citrus, meats, dairy products, onions, and fresh manure are to be avoided. Call me Worm Farmer Amy. Warwick Fabrics, always at the cutting edge of market trends for both residential and commercial furnishing fabrics. Warwick, proud to support How Did You Do That?
Razine has everything you need for decorating inside or outside. Razine, proud to support How Did You Do That? Leaky is a word you never want to hear used to describe your house. Well, Terry, it's all coming together. It is. Yeah. So there's a lot of leaky buildings out there. People are worried that their house is leaky. What sort of areas will you look at and find leaks in this sort of situation? Well, well firstly, it's in the detailing, you know, in the internal corners and what have you. They've been sh basically shortcut from the carpentry right up to the waterproofing. So at the end of the drain, we've got two outlets. We've got one outlet and one overflow. So for council requirements, each, each gutter has to have a standard outlet and then a secondary outlet which we classify as an overflow. But if the first one gets blocked, the, the, the latter will take over and uh, make, make quite a mess on the ground. So it'll show everybody that there's an issue. You don't know that they're failing until the rot has set in and then the money's been spent. And, and that can jump into the tens of thousands of dollars just because you didn't spend the money on a $150 overflow in an outlet. It's, it's poor economy. Poor economy. Well, it's all coming together. Yep, we're very happy with it. And we'll be moving on and getting uh, the base sheet finished and the, the cap sheet laid today. And then we'll put a deck over it and we'll never see any of it. That's right. <laughs> and, and you'll never see us again because it'll all be perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I figure the time is right. Let's see how Coxie's going with the hidden bed. Hey, what stage are you at? <laughs> this is the final stage, hopefully. I mean, oh, cool. This is, this, actually, I do need a hand now that you're here because I'm trying to put these brackets on here. These are the only bits we bought, so we've had the instruction book. It's had all the assembly parts, everything here. I've cut everything. Sanded it all, got it ready. You'll be painting it later. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> well, whitewashing, whatever. And um, now it's a matter of putting it all together. I timed it perfectly. The end was in sight, and I was in the right place at the right time to give Coxie the helping hand he needed. And sometimes the best support for a complex DIY project like this one is a little bit of space for problem solving. If you're working on your own or you've got someone inexperienced helping you, a good idea to hold stuff, get them in the right position, is to use clamps and blocks. Soft clamps like these can be put straight onto timber, but if you haven't got a clamp like this, a piece of timber on each side will stop bruising the timber. Well that's the basic frame put together, now it's a matter of putting the desk and the bed into it, connecting all the mechanisms and praying that it fits and works. Right. Assemble two link pillars sets attached. Oh. Just make sure. Okay. I wanted this to be a really snug fit and just 14 mil was just a bit big of a hole so a little bit of tape around it ensures that it's a very snug fit. A little tap in with a hammer. Perfect! These plans are quite involved, but if you'd like to build your own hidden bed, you will find a link on our website. So there we have it, finally assembled. Okay, see this is the desk. Okay. Okay, so you imagine the desk has got like something precious on top, like a bottle of water. Or even Amy, you lie down there. <laughs> lie down, I'll show you how it works. Lie on the desk. Now the whole idea is that whatever's on the desk stays level, see? So as it goes down, see you're staying level? Yeah. And then it hits the floor and stays there, and the bed's on top. 
But see, you're dead level, see? As you come up, you stay dead level. <laughs> That's really well done. And there you go. Back to a desk. Back to a desk, chuck the locks in. Outside, the garden is really taking shape. Holes have been dug, plants are arriving, and I, for one, want to know what's going on. So, Daniel, I'm looking at a big crater here. What is this? This is a, what we call a banana pit. We're creating a hole to fill up with compost and water. Bananas are high fertility plants. They love moisture. Well, shall we get into it? What yeah. do we do first? Right, well, first thing to do, we've obviously dug the hole, created yes. it, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we grab some bananas. So, where do we get these banana plants from? Well, these actually come from someone's backyard. We really? just went and dug them out, with permission, of course. Um, and that's how easy they are to acquire. And these are a, a ladyfinger banana, what we call a ladyfinger. Oh, those are the little ones, aren't exactly. they? Yep. Yeah. They're the only ones we can actually grow in New Zealand, the smaller ones. That's about a good amount of root that you want. So we're doing about 600 apart, just roughly that. We need to water these in. These will need a really good water. Okay, like a bucket full or a like a hose? A drenching, a okay. hose standing there for 10 minutes or so. And because we didn't get a lot of root on these um, bananas, these are just going to wilt and die. So we actually want to cut that back <gasps> really? I know, to one leaf, and that's all. Really? Otherwise, it'll lose too much moisture oh. and they'll die. Bananas are actually, they, they love potash, which is potassium, and these banana leaves are full of it. So the more banana vegetation you can put in here, the better. We're trying to create a, a tropical jungle. That's what we're trying to do with yep. a high canopy and a low canopy. And all this other stuff is to green out the circle. Totally, okay. so you can't see any soil. Okay. One of them, it improves the humidity of the um, environment around the bananas, as well as keeping the moisture in the soil. Inspired by Daniel, I got stuck in with the guys from Unitech. With this banana pit, the family can look forward to a regular supply of bananas. step through the door, enter a unique environment full of great design and innovative product. Lifestyle Appliances is proud to sponsor How Did You Do That? These boys are really moving. The new glass balustrade is going to make a huge difference. I can't believe how quickly it went on. So we've finished stage one now. Finished. So what have we done here? What we had to do was basically strip everything back and uh, we call it site prep, so site preparation to get it ready for the second phase of when you actually come in and do the planting. We took out some of the larger trees, we removed some of the shrubs, all the undergrowth we pulled out, we ripped all of the weed mat up, um, there was a whole pebble layer we had to take out as well. So all the old stuff is gone, I can see we've got a blank canvas. Yeah. What did you replace it with? In the lower part of this garden through here we put, put through a herbal lay mix and the herbal lay mix is a, is a whole um, selection of seeds that comes in a 1kg bag and um, you can spread it over, well we've spread it over this entire embankment and the mix of plants and other things like alfalfa, um, borage, um, 
wheat germ, um, tansy, phacelia, there's a whole range of things. And what it does is it actually supports the, the root growth of the, the, um, the fruit trees that we're going to be putting in here. Wait, I want the desk, not the bed. No, you've got to have the bed, you've got to be dressed. Oh, it looks cute, doesn't it? It does, eh? Yeah. It's got a big bed. It's a twin bed. See, so if you just throw the pillows up here. Just like that, perfect. <laughs> and we get rid of those. Hello. Fingers. Lock it in place. I'm at work. Sweet. Look, you can even leave everything out. Yeah, you can, and that's the beauty of it, like I should. Warp, warp, dead level. It's great, isn't it? It's worked out well. Good job, Coxie. Worth all that work? I know it's a headache. There's but so many pieces, so many bits and pieces, and then, like, but when it all came together, it did. It was, it was, yeah, it was worth it. This room has got so much good light and everything like that. It makes a perfect office. But then the beauty is, oh, I've done enough work today. I'm really tired. Oh, shut that down. Mm. And I there you go. Yeah, we know it's done. It's halfway through the day, a little nana nap. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, it's so comfy. I know, but there's enough sleeping. I've got something else to show you. Oh, cool. See? Look at the oh, glass! Gold. You can see right through this to the view. Yeah. I know it's golden. And like clear glass straight through. Good work, Metro. This deck was just horrible before. Yeah, it was a, a waterproofing system that wasn't waterproof. So underneath here now we've got the full tank waterproof system, torched on, big long drain, all the correct falls, water running out, overflows, everything working. So they'll never have that problem again? No. Not going to have rotting decks? No. This one's going to okay, last? Okay, it's a lot smaller than what we had, but look at it. It's well big enough for a bedroom deck. Big aluminium flashings in the dark colour, this new stained cedar, all the new joinery in. It's worked out well, though. It's worked out really well. This is really what you want, is just to be able to capture the view yeah, here. Yeah, this deck's only purely for that. To come up here, end of a long day, relax, have a cold one, check out the view. Best chill out spot. Next week, a huge piece of glass tests the spider crane. I help restore the old aluminium, and we start work on a very special home for some new chickens. It's a lot more than just windows that let you see outside. Whether it's for balconies, bathrooms, kitchens, pools or patios, our glass brings light, life and texture to any home. Metro Performance Glass, bringing you How Did You Do That?